Hello, this is Joseph Kerr, and welcome to my story. I'll continue to read this book called Mahela Jackson, The Voice of Gospel and Civil Rights. We began, up, we began from the end of page 48 to page 49. Starting with page 49. Five. Move on left a little hunger. Move on left a little hell. Johnny Mowers went to a lost in the tournaments for the gospel concerts. They had more seats than the churches where Jackson usually sang. One place Mowers liked in particular was the Golden Gate Ballroom in New York City. He offered in Jackson one thousand dollars to sing there in September nineteen forty six. On the night of the concert, Bess Bellman, president and owner of Apollo Records, was in an attendant, was in a diner. Not long after the show, she talked to Jackson about recording for Apollo. Jackson's first recording session for Apollo Records was on October third, nineteen forty six. She worked with Art Freeman, music director, and arranged for Apollo to recall four songs, enough for two for two thirty eight RPM records. Unfortunately, neither records sold well, and Bellman told Freeman to let Jackson go. Even Jackson had decided that the record recording in Destiny was not left ready for gospel music. But Freeman had one more idea he wanted to try. He thought Jackson should record, move on up, a little luck, a little holler, and son that she, she had this as a warm up for their first recording session. In the meantime, one of Jackson's records got some attention in Chicago thanks to whether or this Jackson does trafficking. Talking first heard Jackson when he wandered into a Chicago record record shop on a cold wintry day. The man walked behind the counter instead of the tackle lesson to a traffic new record. Then he played Jackson's son. I'm going to tell God all about it while these days. Talking was wooed by Jackson's powerful voice. When he discovered it, that she was from Chicago, he went to hear her sing in a soft soft church. Then he introduced her to Prince Widow and Dice. There's a woman, my friends, and sing and heard, and he sings like the great blues singer besides this bass of smell. Only my hell or Jackson of the South Side does set sing the blues. She sings what is known in her shorts as the gospel. Then he played her record for the first of the many times. Tarkin also invited Jackson to join him on the air during one of his record radio broadcasts. Tarkin's talent as an interviewing were clear. People enjoyed the lovely belt of Jackson between and taken and they like Jackson's music. Tarkin will later become known for his interviews with both celebrities and ordinary people. As host ordinary people, as host of his own radio show, he went on an interview and found about one known guest. He also wrote more than the two dozen books, including several ordinary histories. For their books, for these books, he interviewed people about their experiences during particular time Periods such as the Great Dispersion and World War II. After Jackson's video interview with Stuart Tonkin, Berman decided to give Jackson one more try. On September 12, 1947, Jackson and Freeman went back to the studio to record We Run Up at Little How. The song was too long for one song of the record, so they recorded it on two songs as part one and part two, devoting both sides of the record to one song was something that had not been tried before. 
gaps in Austin had not in Northern ideal. That was to lose both Piano and Organ and accomplishments. Leisure records friction on only one or the other. Jackson believed that the two instruments together, instruments together, were in fairness to the sound. We on, move on up a yellow house was an immense success. There were so many requests from records of stories throughout the country that Apollo had trouble keeping it up with the men. Jackson was paid, was paid a royalty of essential percentage of the price of each so, she spent part of the first year's voyage on a classical to lose for her tours. About the time that We Were On Up A Little Howard was released, Jackson was named official soloist for the National Baptist and Convulsion. Also in 1947, she met Paris Middle Island Falls. Over the years, Jackson had worked with several different accomplishments, not having a regular piano player sometimes left her scrambling to find an accomplishment for the concert. The two women first met when Fonz was playing for a group of singers who were appearing in the same concert as Jackson. Jackson asked Fonz to play for a whole as well. It was a gorgeous moment. We called Fonz, we had been a fan for years. I couldn't secondarily believe that I was really playing for the great Mahela. Soon after that concert, Fonz became Jackson's regular accomplice. They were a strong team. Although working with Jackson was not always easy, Jackson often changed the way she sang a song depending on her mood and the response of the antennas. Fonz learned to adapt to those changes. Over time, it appeared that she could almost independent anticipate them. Fonz also had to deal with a late night telephone calls. Although Jackson did not read music, she knew how she wanted a song to sound. Aspiration for her might, aspiration for her music might come to Jackson at any time. Fars sometimes got car. Fars sometimes got caught in the middle of the night when Jackson wanted to talk about an idea for the spectacular per- song. Jackson had her first agent. When Brandman introduced her to Harry Lesakir of the Williams Boys Injury Agency. As her agent, Lance Kill will be in charge of the organization concert dates for Jackson. In return, he will get 10% of her earnings from that, those performances. Getting booked for Jackson was not a problem. In fact, Lance had trouble keeping up all the requests. When the success of Blue Bone Up a Little Howard, Berman was eager to release another record. Jackson had already recorded two songs, but she did not agree with Berman, with Berman about which should be the main side. Berman profited. What could I do? Why Jackson like even me? Berman producing the record with what I what could I do? As the hit side as the hit side and even me. As the flip side, but it was Jackson's favorite. Even me. That cut on what listers around the country. Even when an agent and successful records, Jackson still had problems with dishonest concept promoters. In nineteen forty eight, for example, she was asked to sing for a concert at Convulsion Hall in Fair Daphne. While the promotion tried to get out of playing or painting on her what she was on, Jackson took her shell of the gate represents and left. The next morning, the promotion showed up at Jackson's hotel with two policemen. They handcuffed Jackson and took her to the play police station. She called a minister friend. Managers to convince 
the police that Jasper was in town and to the money she had taken. She was so she was released. In nineteen forty eight, President Harry S. Tolman, who was running for re election, asked Jackson to make some campaign appearances with him. Jackson traveled with Tolman, singing at politician rallies in Ohio, Missouri, Ohio, Missouri, Indiana, and Illinois. Truman, Truman was really re-elected. For the second term as president, and in 1949, he invited Jackson to see him at the White House. That year, Jackson saw her brutal solo, but she was still interested in being a businesswoman. She opened her own business, Mahela's House of Flowers. She put friends in charge of running it on a day-to-day -day basis, but she enjoyed arrangements flowers. Herself, when she was in town, Jackson soon learned that she was the volume of many European fans. It began with Huggins, Pennsylvania, and French jazz history. He had a weekly radio program that was broadcast throughout Europe. After discovering Jackson during a trip to New York City, he played her records on his show. He lets his listeners like her music, and a company that released Apollo's recordings in France and England began distributing Jackson's Europe records in Europe. In 1950, Jackson's recording of I Can't Put My Trust in Jesus won the world from the French Academy of Music. That girl, a concert promoter named Joe Buster, asked Jackson to sing for a gospel concert that he was organized organization at Collins Hall in New York City. Jackson refused at first, saying that Collins Hall was classical training musicians perform. These type of songs gospel are not high enough for Collins Hall. Collins Hall. She insisted, Boston, Boston will not take no fall, no for the answer. He continued to ask, and Jackson finally agreed to say. The concert was scheduled for October 1st, 1950. There were several gospel performances on the program, but Jackson was to have the whole of closing of the concert. About 8,000 tickets were sold, many people from New York City's Harlem, Others have made the trip from cities such as Boston, Pittsburgh, and Wally, North Carolina. Jackson arrived on her stage, looking in London in a black velvet car car wall, but she was experiencing a bad case of stage fright. She took a moment to gather on her courage. I stood there gazing at the thousands of men and women who had come to hear me. A baby nurse and watching women on the stage with great artists like Ella Ewa Walker, Kossel, and Lily Pons, and Molly Anderson has sung, and I was afraid I wouldn't be able to make a sound, she recalled. Once she started to sing, all of the nervousness was forgotten. Jackson soon had the crowd clapping, stomping their feet. And dancing in the asses. And dancing in the owls. Something that was unheard of at Collins Hall. Jackson was so caught up in the music and the indigenous response that at one point she got down on her knees to sing. It was something she often did when she was feeling the music. Suddenly, Jackson realized when she was. Now, well, best remember, William Carter's call. She said to the diners, if, and if we cut up too much, they might pull us out. The Chicago Defender reported that Bosey was so excited about the concert that he immediately announced that the affair will be held in Nellie. For the next several years, Jackson performing at each of those Nellie concerts.
Most of the people in the Indians, for the first gospel of constant at hard call as hard, were African Americans. Although Johnson has some successful records, few white people knew about her. That began to change in the early, early 1950s as the opportunities arose. One was an investor from Marshall Stearns, a music professor at Hunter College in New York, and a written about jazz. He was organizing in the academy conference on jazz at the Risen Inn in Lenox, Massachusetts, and wanted Jackson to participate professors from important institutions, including the Jordan School of Music in New York City, will be there. Will be there. It was a surprising invitation for Jackson. He did not see jazz, but the professors were studying the organs of jazz, and they believed that which were in all type of the music, such as gospel. Jackson agreed to sing for the group and to talk with the professors about group, about gospel music. The honors of the musician in had done some real remarks. Just at the conference, staying in what had once been a barn, Jackson was obliged to learn that her room had originally been a horse stall. I finally made it into the white folks' war and look where I First war and luck with landing me. She joked. Jackson had been asking to spend one day at the conference, but she ended up staying there for the whole week. The professor was asking her kinds of questions, but she just laughed when they tried to analyze and her style. There were interesting in technical details such as breathing and tone. Jackson was not concerned with those things. I just told them, you're born with singing in you. Everything is right when singing comes from the soul. Jackson was also asked to perform in their servant tours of the town, a popular and Sunday night television via the show. Television was in, was in its infancy in then, and most shows featured on only white entertainers, network executives. Feel that certain sponsors of the shows will put their advisors if African Americans appear on a program. Advisors paid for those shows, and the networks did not want to lose those in, that income. Ed Sullivan was one person who would not be held to that standard. Toast of the town introduced a number of African Americans to television and diners including Mahela Jackson. One the day on the day Jackson arrived to rehearse her for the show, she discovered her that she was to be back up by the Oscar and the choir. Jackson performed to sing with an accomplishment on only a piano and an organ. She would have to talk to Mr Sullivan. People involved but the show knew that Sullivan did not want to be in Florida before a show, and no one ever disturbed him in the his dress when Jackson did not listen to their warnings. She marched into his dressing room, surprising Sullivan in his under under shorts. Don't worry about those shorts, she said. I'm a hell Jackson. And I just came to tell you I don't want all those horns blowing behind me when I sing. All I want is my piano and my organ and my own way of singing. Jackson got her way. She performed the song, Dig a Little Deeper. When the, with the concert met, so only a piano and an organ, television viewers were delighting her. We got a lot of mild response, and they love her. Sullivan said. In the meantime, Jackson was at, was making plans for the European tour. Although she had traveled all across the United States, she had never been overseas. Shuts me her that seas sick, and she did not like to fly. If God meant me to be up there, he wouldn't have put me down here, she explained. It was the French award for her song. 
I could put my trust in Jesus. That me or change her mind about going abroad. If they're going to be nice enough to give me a prize, I don't want to be enough or a lady to go in and say thank you, she said. While her agent working on an engagement for the tour, Jackson continued to perform at concerts in many parts of the country. She was, she said, but she was not feeling well and was losing weight. Her doctor found that she had tumor in her intestines. He advised her to have an operation to remove the intestines, but Jackson said there was no time. She had come communities, including the upcoming European tour. You have a rough trip if you go, her doctor warned, but Jackson would not cancel the tour. People will, come, will count on her. Don't, don't you worry about Haley, she said. I got strength in my mind. She had no way of knowing on her how her strength will be tested. Number 6. A Turning Point In October 1952, Jackson performed for the third time at Carnegie's Carnegie Hall. Later that month, she left for Europe. Miller and Fars was her accomplishment for the tour, and Jackson's agent, Harry Lasker, traveled with them. The first stop was Paris. Well, friends gave Jackson says a roughly welcome that the police were needed for crowd control. Jackson was scheduled for two concerts in the two days. It was her costume to read from her Bible backstage to prepare for the performance. By the night of her concert, she was feeling too weak. She had had her in-game regardless real Bible passage to her. It appeared to give her the strength. She needed. On stage, Jackson performed with that same emotion that elders had come to accept. She had offered them more African American, African dollars to tears during the concert. She got the same response from her fans in France. Even though most of them could not understand English, they rewarded her with several curtain calls. The following day, she wrestled to gain strength for her next performances. From Paris, she went to London. At her concert in the War of Hall, she received greetings from Queen Elizabeth and Prime Minister Winston Churchill. Jackson was not the only one who was on the program for that concert. Others include Blue Sin on Big Bell, Big Bell Bronzy, and a jazz brand. It did not appear to be a good combination. The hall was only half full, and the dancers showed little escapade answer. Some say the organization, that organizations had tried to appeal to too many people by offering three different types of music. Jackson was not happy with her performances, not getting the dance involved in it was a disappointment, but Jackson was weak and the pain, unknown to the dancers. She collapsed off stage. Still, she went on with the tour. Her concert in the English cities of Sutton, Suttonham Town, Oxford, and Birmingham went well. And doctors had no idea that Jackson was not in good health. Jackson got two concerts in Collingwood and uh, Denmark. Fans went outside in an tunnel on a cold, rainy night just to show for Jackson as she left the building. The day after her first concert, Kendra filled her hotel lobby with flowers on the regular show. Jackson sang her latest European release, Silent Night. Her appearances on the show brought in 20,000 mail orders requests for the record. For the record. From Carlton Panahill, Jackson went back to Paris. She had planned to end her tour with a visit to the Holy Land, that hour on the eastern shore of the Mediterranean Sea was said to be where Jesus Christ had lived and died. It was the site of many of the places.
that Jackson has read about the whole, on her Bible. In her Bible, Jackson got no father that than Paris. Jackson got no father than Paris. She collapsed on stage during the concert and had to cancel the rest of the tour. Doctors said that she was not well enough to travel, but Jackson wanted to be home against the doctor's advice. She flew back to Chicago when she had surgery on November 26. The surgery doesn't any last hope that Jackson will ever have children. She also faced a slow recovery. After having lost almost 90 pounds in only three months, it took a long while to regain her strength, and Jackson had plenty of time to think about her future. One of the decisions she made was to sell her flowers shop. Jackson's first out town concert after her surgery was in March 1953, when she performed in Mexico, 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 Mexico Mexican. In May, she was back in the recording studios for two new songs, Down to the River, and One Day. By summer, Jackson was back to her full schedule of tour. In October 1953, Jackson performing in Gallery's Hall again. This time, she stayed in Middletown, Manhattan, at the Wellington Hotel. Until then, African-American have been banned from hotels in that arena of New York City. One past trip, Jackson has stayed in house hotels in Harlem and traveling to apartments downtown. At the Mitch Miller, our collaborators records Hall Jackson's latest colleagues Hall concert. He wanted Hall to sign a contract to record with Clarence. A contract with Apollo was coming to the end. She could sing enough, but she was feeling dissatisfied with the company. By that time, Move On Up at Little Hallow had sold 1.5 million copies. Even me had sold more than a million copies, but Jackson believed that she was not getting her fair share of the honors from the rec- from her record. Jackson decided not to renew her deal, deal with Apollo, but she was in too, but she was in no hurry to sign on our, with another company. According to some reports, Claudia's offering a four-year contract that guaranteed her fifty thousand dollars a year. But Jackson won time to think about it for the next few months. She carried the contract in her oversized purse as she tours the con- country. She prayed about the offer and pulled the contract out now and then the way to read the, f- the fine print. She consulted on her blower in Chicago and asked her friend John Hammond Hemin- for advice. Hammond was a music city and his records and record producer, Mahela. Mahela, if you want ass in, li- in life and to be known by the right and diners to do it, he said, but if you want to keep on singing for the black and diners, forget singing with Clavado because they don't know the black mark at all. Finally, during the Easter week in 1954, Jackson signed into a contract. Afterwards, Hammond, Hammond said that Jackson signed with Columbia for the money. Others said that she was interested in reaching more people through her music. I believe, I believe I have missing to sing for people, she had once said. However, her reason for going with Columbia, the partnership did not have have her. The partnership did have her with a loss in dollars. The company moved quickly to promote her. One of the first things Columbia did was arranges for Jackson to have her own radio show on a CBS radio station in Chicago. At Jackson's request, 
Stars Techers was harmed as a witness for the show. The Mahela Jackson Show premiered on September 26, 1954. Until then, very few African Americans had hosted their own radio show. Jackson became the first to have one dedicated, 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 dedicated to gospel music. Only. Busy toy, Jackson could not always be in Chicago to do the radio show live on Sunday nights. As a result, the 30 minute program was taped in front of Daniels in a studio theater in the Wrigley Building in downtown Chicago. The theater had seating for about 400 people, and they could not accept correctly what Jackson started to say. A reporter for Time magazine wrote about the first recording assassin for the show. The Indianapolis members shell and stomped their feet, and Jackson had to quiet down, down, quiet down, down, so that they would not drown out of the music. Don't you start that, or we'll tear this theater apart. She scolded him. You got to remember, we're not in shorts. We're on CBS. Taping of the show in the downtown also worked well for the show producers and were able and were able to cut and shape the program to meet time requirements. That was necessary because Jackson never seen a song the same way twice. For example, a version of I believe was different. Every time, one day, Jackson sang the song in two minutes and forty seconds. Another time she sang three minutes and 20 seconds, such vulnerable were a problem for radio shows. The longer version was cut out to environments. The show needed to uncommon for the advisors to stay in business. In November 1954, Jackson had her first recording sessions for Columbia Records. By then, record companies were losing the new long playing LP records Governor Groove for three, three and a half revolutions per minute. These LPs could hold about 25 minutes. A busy people side. Jackson recorded 14 songs for her first album, Bless This House. She was back for the Fars Jones Assembly, bending her files on piano. Ralph Jones on organ. And three other musicians playing on guitar, bass, and drums. Jackson's radio sure had a good fan following, but the station had trouble in getting responses. It went for only six, 17 weeks until February the 6th, 1955. The last three shows were cut to 10 minutes each. After the Mahela Jackson show was canceled, Jackson began appearing on a regular on a local television show called In Town Tonight. Stores Take Talking was the written for her appearances. Jackson continued to turn, and the number of white people in her indigenous grew as more of them became familiar with her music. But when Jackson stepped down from the days, she still faced prejudice. It. it was confusion. When I'm on the stage and on television and working with white people, they just hug me and love me and saw and I say, I'm so wonderful and I'm so great. And then when I walking down the street like an ordinary citizen, they don't recognize me. And when I go into the department store in the South, then, then I can't date. I can't get a switch switch. I can't get a sandwich. I can't get a sandwich. I can't get a bottle of pop. I got to stand. I can't even get a cab. And I just though and I'm just the uh, Mahela Jackson that they got through saying how wonderful I am. I don't understand this. What makes people act like that? She wondering. 
such pleasures do, but just such pleasures and maintain him difficult as Jackson, in the middle of frost, crisscross the crisscross in the country in Jackson's Carolina, leisurely one of Jackson's relations drove, but sometimes it was just the two women. There were times they. There were times when they had to drive all night because black were bailed out from the hotels in the area where they had performed. If they were too tired, they pulled over and stepped in the car. They carried food with them so they would have something to eat with wrench when wrench wash refused to sew them. For as we call one night when they stopped at the roadside dining after the concert. She went in a she went in the car while Jackson went to get some food. Jackson soon came back, empty handed, and there were tears in her eyes. She told Foss that a wretch had blocked the door, saying that Jackson could not come in the front. She was ordering him to go around to the back door or leave. Jackson refused to use that the black door. The two women were in a car getting ready to pull it out of the parking lot when a white truck driver came over to them. I'm sorry about what happened now, he said to Jackson. I hope in my lifetime to see the end of such things. They had handed, then he handed them a sack that contained cigarettes and coffee. He left without knowing what he had had. Others were also hoping for the ending to protest it on December 1st, 1955. Rosa Parks, an African American woman in McGovern, Alabama, was arrested on a shady bus when she refused to give up her seat to a white man. She was not the first to be arrested for that reason. But African American advocates in McGovern decided to lose her arrest to protest the segregation by boycotting the city buses. If they stay off the bus, the bus com- 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 companies will lose money, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. and the revolution of rep, Dr. D. Abernalia, helped for the McGovern improvement and saturation to now the boycott. Through this organization, they raise money to organize and carpools to get African Americans to work without the buses. In August 1956, Jackson attended the National Baptist Convention in Denver. It was there that she met the revolution in Baton Voluntary. That far, he contacted her about coming to McGovern to sing at the rally to raise money for the buses bull, bus bull cart. He also hoped that Jackson would inspire the poor people who were getting discouraged with the boycott. It had already lasted months longer than anyone had said it. That will be the end of the part three of the session. Part four starts tomorrow, start on number seven. Today, this is Joseph Cook. Have a great evening.